Welcome back to another Sunday Mass. I hope you had a great week. Today, we celebrate World Day of Migrants and Refugees. Migrants are people who move from one country to another to find work. Refugees are people forced to leave their country to escape war, being treated badly or natural disasters. They have to find a new home in another country. The church has been celebrating World Day of Migrants and Refugees since 1914. Migrants and refugees in a new country face unfamiliar people, environment, food, culture and language. The church reminds us that we are to show care and concern to these friends in our midst and pray for them as they face the many challenges in their lives. Today, Pope Francis invites us to think about everyone, especially migrants and refugees. Let us not treat them as them and those, but instead welcome them as us and we. This means that we are on a journey of faith and love as a family of God, even if we are different. So let us begin by saying this prayer that Pope Francis has written specially for World Day of Migrants and Refugees. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Holy Beloved Father, your Son Jesus taught us that there is great rejoicing in heaven whenever someone lost is found, whenever someone excluded, rejected, or discarded is gathered into our we, which thus becomes ever wider. We ask you to grant the followers of Jesus and all people of goodwill the grace to do your will on earth. Bless each act of welcome and outreach that draws those in exile into the we of community and of the church, so that our earth may truly become what you yourself created it to be, the common home of all our brothers and sisters. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Let us now sing this song together, knowing that no matter how different we are, we are all children of our loving God. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He brought me in all His love.
Let's take a break to catch our breath. Matthew 25, 35 says, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Jesus tells his disciples and all of us that whatever we do to others, we do to him. You know, sometimes we meet someone new or someone that we are not so familiar with. We don't know what to do. And we're not sure if we should really be that friendly to them. Now, Matthew 25, 35 reminds us that if we love Jesus, we would see him in everyone. So the next time you see a new face, remember to smile brightly. Let the love of Jesus move you to make someone feel welcomed. Have you been in a situation where you saw someone new or unfamiliar and you were unsure what to do? Or have you been the new person in either a new school, new class, or a new neighborhood? Do you remember what it felt like to be unsure if you would fit in? The next time you are in one of these situations, remember to be friendly to the new person so that he or she would feel loved and accepted. Hi, I'm John. We haven't seen you at a playground before. And I'm Sabine. Are you new to the neighborhood? Hi, I'm Sarah. My family and I are new in Singapore and to this neighborhood. Oh, welcome to our neighborhood! And Singapore! Hey, would you like to play with us? Can I? Of course you can! Join us! Are you sure? Yes, come on! <laughs> that was fun! It hasn't been easy for my family to find new friends. It was hard getting used to the food and the place too, but now I feel so much more comfortable. Thank you for making me feel so welcomed. You're welcome. And you are most welcome to play with us anytime. See you tomorrow. Bye! Isn't it wonderful that John and Sabine welcomed Sarah and made her feel accepted? They had so much fun playing catch together. Even though we may all come from different backgrounds or countries, we are similar in many ways. And it can also be really interesting to learn new things from friends from a different country too. This week, let us find opportunities to make someone new feel loved and accepted. It may be a friend in school or someone who has come here to work who might feel new to the country or place. By small acts of kindness and love, we can show our love and support as one big family of God. Your love 
amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah. Shines through, I can feel this God's soul rising up in me. Tomorrow, we celebrate the feast of St. Vincent de Paul. He is well known for loving and caring for the poor. After he was ordained, he was captured by pirates and sold as a slave. He managed to escape after two years and return to France. He then devoted his life to caring for the poor and needy. He teaches us we must love our neighbours as being made in the image of God and above all, to practice charity, which is the glue that binds communities to God and all persons to one another. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul continues works of charity in 153 countries all over the world, with an estimated of 800,000 members spreading God's love through personal acts of charity and service to poor and needy. For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comment section with us. We can't wait to see them. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us about the Mass. Did you know that before the circuit breaker, Mass was regularly celebrated across Singapore in 17 different languages? In addition to Singapore's official languages, English, Mandarin and Tamil, our diocese offers Mass in Chinese dialects like Cantonese and Teochew, and South Asian languages like Sinhala and Malayalam. Since we host migrant families from all over the world, our priests also minister to Catholic communities from Asia, speaking Indonesian, Tagalog and Korean, and the West in Spanish, French, German and Italian. Whichever language Mass you attend, the meaning of the words remains the same. The order of the Mass is the same. The Bible passages are the same. Father's gestures are the same. And most importantly, the same Jesus comes to be with us at every Mass. Our Church celebrates Mass in many languages so that Catholics from every nation can understand and worship better. But we remain united in one bread, one body, one spirit in Christ. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about many languages, one Mass. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about reaching out to the strangers in our midst. 
There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 26th September 2021. We offer up this Mass for those who have left their native lands that they may find welcome in their new communities. Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome everyone who's watching here uh, to this special Eucharist. We're going to find out later why today's Mass is so special. Because we're going to be talking about and reflecting on a group of very, very special people. So every time we come to the Eucharist, we remember that Jesus has saved us. We remember God's love and God's salvation. And so we lift up our sins to the Lord, knowing that He is merciful and forgiving. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud. He spoke with Moses but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldad and the other Medad. The spirit came down on them, though they had not gone to the tent, the names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then said Joshua, son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, My lord, Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets. And the Lord gave his spirit to them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect. It refers to
letter of Saint James. An answer for the rich. Start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and silver are corroding away, and the same corrosion will be your own sentence, and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Laborers mowed your fields, and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out. Realize that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth, you have had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who is not one of us casting out devils in your name. And because he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, you must not stop him. No one who works a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly, he will most certainly not lose his reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith would be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone round his neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell into the fire that cannot be put out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye should cause you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die nor their fire go out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So let me ask you something, okay? Have you ever said to someone in a moment of anger, I don't friend you anymore? Have you ever said that to anybody? When I was in school, it was quite common to hear things like that. When, when two people would have an argument or a disagreement with each other, one of them would say, I don't friend you anymore. Which means to say, I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to hang around with you anymore. But sometimes we don't need to actually say to somebody, I don't friend you anymore. We can just ignore people and pretend like as if they're invisible. 
And just in that way, we can not be their friends. So I was telling you at the beginning of this Mass that today the Church remembers a group of very special people, right? Today is Migrants and Refugee Sunday. So migrants are people who leave their country and go somewhere else to work, to earn money so that they can give their families at home a better life. Then they are refugees who are in a very difficult situation. It's because of war or because they are being persecuted in their home country or because their homes were destroyed because of natural disasters, they have to leave their places of origin and go somewhere else so that they can be safe. So today the church remembers all migrants and refugees in a very special way. Today is a day when we remember all of our friends who come from far away and who are living among us now. Sometimes they speak a different language, they may look different from us, but they are our friends. And so today we must ask ourselves whether or not they really are our friends. So in the first reading today, we hear about these two guys called Eldad and Medad. And they are prophets, they have some gifts. But Joshua doesn't like them being prophets and so he goes and complains to Moses. And Moses asked him, why are you upset? What are you complaining about? Isn't it a good thing that somebody is a prophet? It is a good thing. So then the next question is, what is a prophet? So very often we might think that a prophet is somebody who can tell the future. But that's not what a prophet is. A prophet is not there to tell the future. So what is a prophet? A prophet is somebody who tells the present. Well, what do I mean by that? So I'll explain that, okay? Here in Singapore, there are a lot of prophets, you know. Have you met some of them? I have many friends who are prophets and they live here in Singapore. I know this group of people who on the weekends go to the foreign worker dormitories, bringing them food and toiletries and SIM cards. And after they distribute these things to them, they sit around and talk with them and make friends with them and ask them, how are they doing? I think these people are prophets. I know another group of friends who volunteer at a telephone helpline and they're there 24 hours a day. And if there are any foreign workers in Singapore who feel like as if they miss their homes, who are worried about their families and they would like somebody to talk to, they can call these telephone hotlines and these people will be waiting to receive their call and talk to them and be their friend. I think they are prophets. And I know this group of lawyers and they help foreign workers who have been cheated of their money or who have been abused. And they help them for free because they know that these people don't have a lot of money. And I think that they are prophets too. Can you be a prophet? Of course you can, you can be a prophet. When you see other people don't want to be friends with some other people, maybe in your class, or maybe the people that you meet in your tuition center or anywhere else, or they're being bullied or people are making fun of them because they speak differently from us or because they come from another place, and you say, you say, stop doing this, and you reach out and be friends with them, then you will be a prophet. Maybe you have helpers at home who come from another place. And maybe one day you help her to clean the house, or maybe at the end of the day she's feeling tired and you just make her a cup of Milo. That is being a prophet. I think that Pope Francis is a prophet. He always reminds us of people that we don't want to be friends with. And he encourages us to say that we have to go and make friends with them. You know, a few years ago, there was a terrible tragedy in Italy. There were these group of refugees who were escaping from Africa 
and they were sailing in this boat to Italy. And just before they reached Italy, the boat sank and many of them died in the sea. When Pope Francis heard this story, he was so moved by what had happened to these people that he decided that I will go there and meet them. And he went there and met with the survivors and he consoled them and he celebrated Mass with them. I think Pope Francis is a prophet and I think he's giving us an example of how we are called to reach out to other people who are suffering. In the Gospel today, Jesus says that if anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly, you will certainly not lose your reward. So we are reminded of the many migrants and refugees who live among us. Some of them are suffering and some of them have stories that they want to share with us. Later on at today's Mass, we are going to meet some of these people who will be sharing their stories and the stories of their families at home. And we are reminded by the example of other Christians, by the example of Pope Francis, and by the teachings and example of Jesus, that we must go out to them and be their friends. And so, will you give them a cup of water to drink? Will you welcome them? Will you be their friend? So now we renew our faith by praying the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in heart, voice and conscience with believers throughout the world, let us lift up our prayers with open hearts and a grateful spirit, asking especially for God's help and compassion. The response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop William Goh, all priests and clergy. We pray that our Heavenly Father may bless them with the gift of wisdom in leading the Church as they proclaim the Church's teaching on human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of every nation, we pray that God will grant them wisdom and help them protect the dignity of all human persons through their policies and laws. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church, we pray that God inspires us to take action in our local communities to support and protect migrants and refugees and to advocate on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world, 
We pray that we may grow in our awareness of the issues of migration and become a voice in the public square, calling for greater protection for these populations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For migrants and refugees, especially those who have had to leave their countries and homes in times of conflict, we pray that they may find comfort, support, safety and belonging in the communities that they have settled in. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those affected by the coronavirus through illness, isolation or anxiety, that our Almighty Father would grant them relief and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our P6 students preparing to take their PSLE in the coming week, that you grant them wisdom, grace, and a calm spirit, keeping them in good health as they undertake their exams. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, you are justice for the oppressed and hope for the hopeless. Hear our prayers today and help us to reach out in love and concern for all our brothers and sisters so they can live a life marked by respect, dignity and hope. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for our children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and as once for, our, for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Pope Francis, Bishop William, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. 
Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at His command. And may our church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, and with all the Saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Together now we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So because we cannot be here at this Eucharist in a physical way and, and share in the body and blood of Christ, we say this prayer to ask the Lord to come uh, into, our, into our bodies and into our hearts and our souls. As Jesus, our Lord and God, we so desire to receive communion today, but because we cannot, we ask you, Lord, to be present in us, take root in our hearts and in our souls, that you may nourish us spiritually and physically, to share your love with all those who need to experience it today. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So we have something special for you. We're going to watch a video now and we're going to meet some of our friends who come from many different parts of the world and who are living with us in our society in Singapore today. They're going to tell you about stories of their life and stories of their families at home. And we're also going to hear from a number of people who have reached out to make friends with them and to help them in their need. <laughs> আমার বাবে তোমার গান টেকা বসে ছিল না আমরা লোন করে টেকা খেত বিছেছি জমি বিছেছি তারপর ব্যাংকেতে লোন আনছি তখন হাউস বিক্রি 
তারপরে ওখান থেকে আমার গান ওই সাই ইকার পরে পরে লঙ্কার কামে ওখান থেকে আমার গান আনবো এই টাকা পয়সা ঈদ না খাওয়ানো দেওয়া না পরে এই বলে ব্যাংক খেলা হয়েছে পরে পানি ফার্স্ট স্টার সিঙ্গাপুর লকডাউন মাই ফ্যামিলি হাউ তো মাখান আই নো মানি নো কি ফোর মান্থ সেভেন মান্থ আই নো আঁকি হাউ তো আই মানি অনেক কষ্ট করছি আমার লোন আসলে লোন দিতে না ঠিক মতো I'm not really lucky with my first employer, so I need to borrow a phone with my neighbor just to call my family at home. It's difficult, because you know, you want to check your family, but then your employer won't allow you to use phone. Before I take my off, I need to do work. Wash the cars, clean the house. So I leave the house for maybe around 12 already. Then I need to come back at 4.30. I sleep about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And then I woke up at 5.30. My全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都是全部都